If you want to use Apple's Reminders app to organize your to-dos, how should you set it up? Here's what I would do. Now, we're over here on the Mac, but this works on iPhone and iPad as well. So here I've got reminders, and here I have a little note with the steps that I want to show you all so I don't forget anything. Now, the very first thing that I want to do is split out actionable to-dos from non-actionable lists or collections. And let me show you what I mean by that. Let's say I have a list of books to read and a shopping list and a, another shopping list. Those are not really to-dos that I might want to consider when I sit down in the morning and think, hmm, what am I going to do today? So let's split those out from the actual to-dos. And the way to do that is we're going to create or we're going to grab one list and actually drag it on top of another. That creates a group. And I'll just call these, I'll just call this lists. And then I'll drag shared grocery list under there as well. So now we've got these over here and they're just away from all the other stuff. Here I have a list called reminders and that's the next thing that I want to work on. This is the default list and I'm going to rename it to inbox so that if we add something to the reminders app and we don't have time to organize it by default it ends up in a list called our inbox which is you know how we normally think of inboxes. Next up we are going to create a list for each area of our life and we're going to do that by clicking add list and we'll start with admin and finances and we will also create um, maybe health, home, I like to have one called fun and trips and we'll do relationships and we'll do one called work. Now you might find that you want a slightly different organization which is fine but this is a good place to start. I'm going to drag fun and trips onto admin and finances to create a new group and I'm going to call this group to do's. I'll just drag that above lists because we're going to spend more time in there and then I'll drag the other lists underneath that group. There we go. So these are the big areas, the big domains of your life. Work tasks go in here. Now, projects become tasks with subtasks. So a project is a group of to-dos that together contribute to a joint outcome. For example, me producing this video. I will create a task here and I will call it create um, reminders to do app organization video. And that has a bunch of components to it that I need to work through to finish this. So I will create another reminder, another to do, and then I will go command and the square right bracket and that outdents it and makes it a subtask. And I will call it write up outline of video, edit video. Uh, well, for, we have to record the video before editing the video. <laughs> That'd be great. Um, upload video to YouTube. Sorry, this is, this is funny. Um, and publish video. And I can say share video on social media. Okay, so together, these are the steps that I need to work through to complete this project. So projects, we are representing them as tasks with subtasks. And you'll see that this particular task is now bold, meaning it has subtasks. So we can collapse the subtasks or expand them if we want. And of course, we can check off these individual you know, to-dos and check off the complete project. I recommend against making your projects separate lists in the outline here. Because if we wanted to make this um, project, create reminders to do app organization video, if we represented that as a list in here, then by the time we were done, we would just have to delete it from here. There's no way to complete a list. You can only delete lists. And that's a shame because then it will never show up under completed, okay? So I recommend showing projects like this. Now, of course, not everything is a project. Sometimes you just have a specific task that says um, update YouTube channel picture or something like that. That's just an individual task and it lives right here. So this is a task and this is a project. Okay, now, next up, we are going to use the date property to denote deadlines. So you'll know, or maybe you don't know, but now you know that Apple Reminders has a date property. So I can actually go to a particular task and I can assign it a date. Let's choose an example that's a little bit more relevant. And that is buy a present for Martha's birthday. Okay, so that's a task that we might have to do. Now let's say that Martha's birthday is actually November 11th. Okay, boom. Then we want to assign a date of November 11th to that particular task. Why is that? That's because this is the due date the deadline, the last possible day by which we need to do this or else there's some negative consequence that's meaningful. So in this case, not having a present for her birthday, right? 
But of course, there's a difference between the date when you absolutely need to get something done by and the moment when you do it. You often want to do things ahead of time. That's good productivity practice. So we think of the date that we have inside Apple Reminders as the deadline as I absolutely need to get this done by November 11th at the latest. But that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to wait until November 11th to do this. So how are we gonna solve this particular issue? And by the way, just, just another example. Another example might be pay the rent. And maybe pay the rent is due by November 25th. Okay, so again, then we'll assign November 25th. This is, if this is like the last possible day that we need to pay the rent by, all right? Okay, now, we don't just want to denote when this absolutely has to be done by. We also want to have some way of saying, when are we actually gonna work on this? And so that's the next step. It is to use flags to denote, hey, I plan to work on this today, or I plan to work on this next. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, well, you know what? Buying a present from Arthur's birthday, I have to do it by November 11th at the latest, but I'd actually like to do this sooner than that. So what am I gonna do? I'm actually gonna click inside this task uh, right here. There we go. And then we're gonna click the flag icon. Now it becomes a flag task. And you'll see that we have this built-in flag view. And if I click that, this task will show up right here. Now we are going to use that to denote, hey, I want to work on this today. And we're, to help us with this, we are actually going to set up a smart list. Now smart lists are pretty cool. Here's how that works. We create at, we click at list, a new list, and we are gonna call it today actually. I know there's already a today view, but we're gonna hide that one. We're gonna call it today and we're gonna click make it into a smart list. And then we're gonna say this smart list should show all of our reminders that either um, are flagged. So flagged is flagged or that have a date. So a due date of today. And then we will click include past due. Okay, so incomplete items that are past due, we're also gonna show it in this today view. Then I'm gonna click okay. Now we've got this new smart list over here and let's just, um, no, we can't drag it. We have to right click and go pin list, okay? And then what we'll do is we we'll wanna hide this one. You do that by going to view, then going to show smart list and just unchecking today. Boom, now we've got our own custom built today smart list that lives here. What this is going to do is this is going to show every single task that we flagged, meaning we'd like to work on this today or that has a due date of today. So let's create a task that has a due date of today, which is check in for flight. Ooh, check in for flight. Let's say that has a due date of today. Boom, now it's gonna show up under today because today is going to show both this task because it's due today and this task because we flagged it, okay? So this is how we make that distinction. Next up, what are we gonna do? We are going to set up some tags. This is optional to organize within an area. So for example, for my work, I have a podcast and I have this YouTube channel right here. Maybe I want to have a way of seeing all my podcast tasks at the same time and seeing all my YouTube tasks at the same time without creating many, many, many lists over here, okay? So the way that I can do that is I can actually create a task. Let's say, um, invite a few more guests to my podcast. I can give this one by clicking this button right here or just starting to type right here, a podcast tag. Um, podcast, there we go, boom, whoa. A little bit finicky sometimes on the Mac, by the way, guys, reminders. Um, on iPhone and iPad, this is all a little bit smoother. This is a YouTube task, so I'm going to do hashtag YouTube. And this is also a YouTube thing. So I'm gonna give this a hashtag YouTube task as well. Tag as well, there we go. Okay, so now what I can do is I can actually go and if I scroll to the bottom, I'll see my tags over here. I can click YouTube, see all of my YouTube tasks and I can click podcast, unclick YouTube, see all of my uh, podcast tags. Now there's a bunch more you can do with this and to learn you know, the details of what you can do with all this, you should watch another video I did on Apple Reminders with a bunch of Apple Reminders tips. And I'll make sure to link you to that video at the end of this video, okay? All right, so you can sort of use tags to subdivide areas this way. That's how I would do that. Now let's move on. We can set up some templates. So there's a very cool templates feature in Reminders now. And let me show you how that works. Oh, by the way, let me just move, this is a health thing. I'm just gonna move it to health. It's generally good practice to try and keep your inbox clear, but we'll talk more about that too. Now let's say that I wanted to create a template. So for example, this YouTube video thing right here, I'm gonna do that a bunch of times because I keep producing YouTube videos all the time. It'd be really helpful to have a template to be able to work through. Now, unfortunately, you cannot make tasks with subtasks into templates. You can only make lists into templates. So that's a limitation of, things, or of reminders, but let's work with it anyway. So I will create a list and I'll call it uh, create a YouTube video. 
and I'll click OK. What I will do is I will actually grab these tasks, and I will copy them, and paste them into here. No, that didn't work. Ah, I feel like it should have worked. Whatever, I'll drag them into here for now. Next, I will just grab these and outdent them and remove the top level task because we now have this as a list. Then I will go to File and click Save as Template. And we'll call it Create a YouTube Video and click Create. Now, now that I've done that, I'm just going to move those back over to work. And I'm going to call it Create. Oh, and I'm going to create that task here. Call it Create YouTube Video about Apple Reminders. And I'm going to do, put all of these uh, back underneath here. As you can see, this is a little bit messy, and you might lose some information, like, for example, the order in which these tasks were, which is too bad, really. Um, there we go. Okay. But now we have that template. So let me delete this task over here. And then I can go to Add List. And then under Templates, I can see that Create a YouTube Video right, is right here. So the next time I want to create a YouTube video, I will do this. I will click Create List, and I have a new list that has all of these steps. Now, all I have to do is the, do the reverse process, is grab these and just drag them into the work area or list, and then go ahead and delete this one. So it's a little bit unfortunate that templates only work with these lists, and we're not using lists to denote projects, but you can still use templates this way. You just have to move things around a little bit more. Okay, so that's using templates in this system. Now, next up, we want to set up a weekly review project that repeats you know, weekly. Weekly reviews are very important. So um, we can put this under admin, for example. And let's create a task called a weekly review. Now, a weekly review has a bunch of sub-steps. It has, for example, indent, um, process physical inbox, process email inbox, process reminders inbox, um, process notes created in the created in the past week. Uh, make sure all areas, projects, and to-dos are up to date, and check upcoming events and deadlines. That's roughly my weekly review process. Now, what I want to do is I want this to be something, first of all, um, that I do it on Sundays. Today is a Sunday, so I will actually assign this a date of today. Then I will click on the eye icon over here and just say repeat weekly. And then you can actually click custom and just click on Sunday. And now that will repeat every week on Sunday. So today, as I work through this, I can check it off. And then what I can do is I can go to the schedule view and I can see that on next Sunday, we've got the next weekly review project scheduled. So that's pretty convenient. Okay, we are almost done. I just wanna do a couple more things. I just want to hide lists that we won't be using. So in this case, I don't really, uh, I won't be using the flagged list over here. So I can go to view, Show smart list and flagged because everything that's flagged is really meant for today. So we're going to see that here. Now, assigned is a feature that you can actually assign to dos to someone else who is, you know, also an Apple device user, um, which is not something that I use very often. So I'm just going to go view, show smart list, assigned, and get rid of that. And then we have this nice little um, four views right here that I might use today, scheduled all, which is just everything across all of my lists and completed. Okay. Now, the last thing that I recommend that you do is set up widgets on your iPhone and iPad. Um, you can have some really nice widgets for the Reminders app. And to learn how to do that, I recommend that you watch my Reminders Tips video. I did a video with a bunch of Reminders Tips where I show you a lot of stuff that I didn't show you in this video, which is not so much about how to organize it, but more about what are actually all the things that you can do with Reminders. So go ahead and watch that video next. Thanks so much for watching. Um, Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. If you have any questions about this setup, do leave a comment or either way, leave a comment and let me know what you think. I'm also open to suggestions for improvement. Hey, thanks for watching. Have a nice day. Ciao.